Hi all, today I'd like to continue working on this bridge that I started in a previous episode. More specifically, I would like to put together some more of these structures that you can see right in front of me. And to do this, I think I'm going to start off by crafting myself some temporary scaffolding blocks so that we can plan out this area, as I'd really like to make sure that we create a lot of random variation between these buildings with a lot of unique shapes and just kind of variation to how the path is structured through here so that we can create a nice atmosphere once this thing is all done as I think that's going to be a lot more easy to do if they're all designed up all at once and so let's go ahead and craft up some concrete so we can start planning this out. Fortunately this should be really really simple all I'm going to need is some red orange and yellow dye to make the concrete colours that I want and luckily I have the poppies from my iron farm and then whilst clearing the area for the city that we're working on I picked up all of the flowers that I'll be needing uh, so I have a lot of yellow here for the dye I need and then we can just put these two together and finally to make the orange dye I believe it's just red and yellow there we go so now all we need is some gravel which again fortunately I already have a farm for so that's going to be easy and I don't have a lot of sand right now but it should be enough. Now what I can do to convert this into regular concrete is come over to our brand new farm that we made in the previous episode and then we can go ahead and use our concrete converter. So this right here should be what I have to do. This is actually the first time I've ever used it so I'm going to hope that this all works right now. Okay, and after checking to make sure how this thing actually works, all we need to do is grab ourselves some of the blocks, and then if we hold down right click, as you can see, it's going to go ahead and place those all for us, and spit out some extra blocks so that we get them back. And if you look down there, you can see it's already converting it into the concrete for us. Alright, well this seems to be the last bit here. And so what we're going to end up with a situation of is a little bit of this is still stuck inside the mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on the cobblestone mode just to flush this system out. And then we should see if we jump down here that the rest of our concrete is going to go ahead and blow up so that we can get all of the items we need. And there it is. All right. Well, if we look in here, as you can see, it's gone ahead and started filling these up. Now as you can see I've also been busy at work collecting a bunch of wood for today's projects as well and there's the rest of it and so let's head back over to where the city is going to be and start working on this project. Now if you've ever wondered how I actually get over there I'll go ahead and show you. I just used the portal that's underneath my storage system right now which is technically a chunk loader but I'm kind of using it as a temporary main portal at the minute and if we just head on through here it's a quick trip in this direction and you will spot that uh, this is also where my hoglin farm is that I made in the very first episode and this portal right here is where we want to go. Alright well that's looking familiar and so let's go ahead and build up some of these plans. Well, this is starting to look very different. I really like that we can now get a sense of the skyline in this area. And I don't think this is going to change too much. I really quite like these plans. The only exception to that is I may increase the height of this yellow build on the end just to match the height of some of these taller buildings. But otherwise, I'm very happy with it. So let's actually go ahead and fly on up here. 
and I'll share with you some of my thoughts when putting this together. Uh, besides the main kind of general idea of just adding variation between the individual structures, I wanted to break up this long corridor that we're going to be left with that would otherwise go down the entire bridge. And so I achieved that by creating this build dab smack in the middle. And that's really going to break up the pathway here, forcing the people around either the left or the right side, which is quite interesting. Uh, but it's also going to rule out any kind of horse and cart transportation, any heavy lifting stuff like that on this bridge. And it's going to kind of force it into being more of a footbridge. But that's absolutely fine if they need to do any of those other things. There will be the other bridge over there, which will be perfect for that sort of thing. And so as we come around to this side, you'll also see that the path even splits off into two for this yellow build. And the colours don't indicate anything. They're purely just there to separate the builds. And this red one here is one of my favourites, actually. It's really quirky. And it's what we're going to work on first in today's video. And um, it's got two main sections. So we've got the small bit over on this side, which arches over to the larger bit, which is kind of an S shape here. And that's because I wanted to create another small alleyway down here, similar to what we have going on on this side. But uh, what I wanted to make sure I do is maintain a good proportion, a good ratio proportion between building fronts and railings, because I want a bit of both. This side is quite building heavy, and so I wanted to just bring the railing out a little bit more. And that's why we've got that little bit there. Uh, and this side is quite railing heavy, and so I tried to incorporate the buildings in as much as possible but of course that is just because we have the yellow one here and this actually doesn't carry over to both sides but it's purely just on one side and that's just a little one to add a bit of variation from some of the larger builds that we're going to have here. This orange one is pretty massive and I really like it because it has this corner window detail which I think is going to be really fun to put together. This red one here I'm hoping to turn into a kind of cliche standard medieval looking building maybe it can act as an inn or a pub or something and i was thinking of building it kind of like the style we went with for this build and then for this yellow one at the very end here i have absolutely no idea what i'm going to do so you can share your thoughts with that but just bear in mind we may want to bring it up a little higher and as i'm walking down the path here you'll notice that i've continued the detailing along the pathway with all of the gravel and the stones and bits and bobs like that and you'll also notice that I've added another cheeky little texture pack tweak here. These are the acacia trap doors. I've kept the same shape that we had before, which kind of looks like a grate, but I've gone and made that a metallic, almost rusty metal texture, similar to what I have going on for the windows and the lanterns and the, and the iron bars and things like that. And I think that's just really a really nice detail to have in an area like this. I think I'm gonna find a lot of uses for this. Right now I've used this as the grate for the drains. And so you can see the little bit of water heading on through there. And that of course connects up to the drain that we have underneath here, which I showed previously. And as you can see there, the water does in fact drip down because there is water on top of the hopper. And that's creating this line of moss that's coming down the wall there. Now I think we should get to work putting together this first build here. My plan so far is to continue what we started with the stripped jungle wood. I really like this texture and it's one that we haven't used yet. And I think I'll use that for the majority of the sort of corners and pillars throughout this build. And then I'm thinking of introducing a slightly darker wood for the walls, maybe something like spruce. But for the very top, I'd actually quite like to introduce a bit of stripped oak wood. And then for the roof, I'd like to make an exception and actually use some of the red tiles that we used on those towers. I go ahead and use it for this build as well. I don't think I'll use them too often, but I think it will look good for this build, so we're going to give that a try. And so now I just need to grab myself some resources. Now if you've been wondering how I put these together in terms of gathering materials, what I've got here by my portal is a barrel full of various categories that I've put into shulker boxes of the various materials that I'm using as I put these together. Pretty much whenever I find something I need, I just get a bunch of it and I keep it on me as I assume that I am going to need it later on down the line. And so I just sort of bring these with me and then I more or less have everything I need to put these together. And so let's go ahead and start doing that. 
with this first build right on the end here. All right, well this first build here is finally finished and I gotta say, I'm so happy with how this has turned out. I'm really excited to show you all of the details that I've put in this thing. So why don't we just walk around this thing and take a look at all of the details on the outside to begin with. And I gotta say, walking in through to this bit is such a nice experience. It's got such a nice atmosphere in this sort of courtyard area that we've made here in between these two buildings. You can see that towards this building, I did go ahead and add a vine coming out of this plant pot here and that's really nice, it helps fill in that blank gap that we had as that bit of the wall is also quite blank there. And so that's pretty cool and this right here is our brand new building. Now I pretty much did exactly what I was planning for in terms of the materials I used but all of the details here I had such a blast putting together. Uh, you can see that for one of the details along the south and north side of the building here I used my notes blocks which have different block states and these are technically the crate textures but they're so similar to some of the other details we had in these buildings that I decided to add them onto here almost as a wood variant and so that's pretty cool I really like how this looks and even adding things like buttons I was really focusing on details that's the thing I enjoy building most of all you can see another example of a detail I've added here this is a little hanging basket so this is another addition to my texture pack. Uh, you'll notice that if the fern is in a pot on the ground or on top of a solid block of sorts, it's going to go ahead and just be a regular pot. But if it's floating, it turns into a hanging basket, which is really awesome. And then I've just got that connected to my lever here. Uh, this is another thing I've tweaked in my texture pack just recently, actually. And that's designed to look uh, like metal, similar to what I've done in other areas. And you can see that all of those metal features come together to create a really nice theme uh, which is perfect for medieval stuff but many other things as well which I'm sure we'll explore in the future. And so I've got the trapdoors along this side to kind of separate the floors but it's not as big of a feature as the crates that we had there and I've got some chains above where I'd expect you could hang some maybe some banners during an event or who knows maybe you're washing and uh, various details around the place and you'll notice up here for the windows uh, I did something slightly different. Obviously below I've used the panes again, which are another custom texture, but up here these are actually offset by a full block because of the trapdoors. And so what I did is I went and used the full block variant, which I hadn't changed the texture of yet, so I've now gone ahead and added those to my texture pack. Uh, but we'll take a closer look at those windows later on. Let's go ahead and walk in under here to take a look at the other side. This side's a little bit more simple. I may add a little bit of plants up here in the future, but I think similar to how we added the plants today, we'll probably add them once we do the other buildings here. And um, we'll get round to doing this yellow one later, which is why all of this is sort of so plain on this side. 
but uh, you can see a little bit of the roof coming into play here. I used the trap doors just to add that extra little, little bit of detail so that we can avoid these kind of flat structures. And that's one of the benefits, I think, to kind of creating a custom texture pack like this. It creates so much more variation and we'll be taking a closer look at that roof later on because there's a lot you can do with it. I used a lot of fence gates here to act as kind of supports for various things and also just acts as a nice detail. Same with the signs and obviously these are the double slab variant of my, um, uh, what do you call them, spruce slabs and that creates a vertical plank which is such a nice texture to play around with. It's something you're not used to seeing in the game and it really sort of stands out and I, I love how that looks. And so if we come around to this side you can get a glimpse at the front of the building. It's very similar to what we had before and um, it's kind of like I say just as it was on the other side only we have a lot more detail towards the bottom on this one because it overhangs to where the bridge is. Okay so let's go ahead and head on into the interior here. It's very small and compact and I will be talking more about the interior later on. For now I'm just going to sort of brush past what I've added so far. So I've got a little bookshelf in this entranceway here as we come into this small room which overlooks the river as you can see and we've got a small table in here with some chairs and a candle. Now the cool thing about this candle is this is actually if I go ahead and get myself a flint and steel I can recreate this and show you what I've done here. This is a retexture of mine which is one of my greatest ideas I think. So these are magenta candles which look regular but what you can do is you can stack them and it doesn't add candles it just remains the same texture whilst increasing the level of light. So if I actually do this again, but I light it up, you can see that it slowly increases. And that's a really powerful feature to have because it means you can have little candles which actually give off more light, which is more functional when you do small rooms like this. And so I did that and I've got some storage here and this really small little compact staircase with some railings and things. And as we come on into the interior of the upper section here, you can see it really is quite beautiful. All of the random shapes that we created in this building create for really elegant interiors similar to what we had last time. And so what I've got here is I kind of played around with the windows trying to make it look a little bit unique with all kinds of different spruce details and you can see the full block version of my uh, glass block texture there. And then I've got a hanging lantern up here and as I'm looking up you'll notice that I've got an interesting looking block here. This is acacia wood and this is a texture that I've borrowed from uh, Mizuno's texture pack, I believe, so you may recognize it. And uh, it's just a really nice sort of in-between color to have between spruce and dark oak. And I'm going to be using this a lot later on. I've got another example of the candle over here, using the iron bars to sort of support it. But I've got another candle over on this table here. So this is a similar thing. This is the pink candles. And they do the same thing where when you add more, it just adds more light. But the main difference here is these ones are a larger version of a candle and I really like those. It adds a lot of variation and uh, it's a cute look as well. So I've got a pot here, I've got another sort of um, tree of sorts, maybe a little house plant using the, um, I forget what these are called now, in the plant pot on top. It creates a really nice detail and yeah that's pretty much it for the interior. You can see there is another little window out here and just above uh, there is windows out to the top. I think we'll take a closer look at that when we look at the roof. But uh, you can kind of see out here it's it's a nice little viewing point but it's very compact. There's not a lot of room on the inside especially because of the style of windows that we use here. Okay so let's move things along and take a brief look at the roof. Up here you can see I did go ahead and use all of these uh, tiled textures similar to the towers over on that side to create this. And these roofs are really quite interesting. We've got one tool section over on this bit and then we've got another tool section on this bit but it doesn't connect it goes ahead and cuts off at this point so we can have a little window in here which is really quite cute and then this bit is the sort of what I would call a regular default style of roof going upwards and on here we've got a few details to mix it up we've got a chimney so this uses the deep slate bricks which I really like because they match the kind of metallic textures that you get in the game so that means I was able to use it in combination with my trapdoor texture here and then I've done the same thing I did over there with the chimney only difference is I don't have any smoke coming out of it because I didn't want to do the trapdoors any lower or make the chimney too tall 
because I wanted this style. So that's absolutely fine. Not every chimney needs to be cooking. Uh, but as I sleep here, you'll also see that I've got a little detail in the corner of the roof just to add a bit of variation. I used the mangrove roots to act as a more desaturated plant. I felt like the green would stand out too much. So I went with that and I'm very happy with that. Uh, one of the things I like most about this roof is the use of trap doors, which I mentioned earlier. It adds a lot of really interesting shape to it. And you often see this kind of stair block, stair block pattern in roofs to add more vertical height to it as opposed to this. But adding that trap door in just adds an extra little bit of uh, gradient, well not gradient, but subtle shape as it goes up. And it's really quite smooth. I love that. Uh, and then of course I'm using the walls similar to how I did on that side to act as almost a vertical half slab to make it smoother as well. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. I think now I'm going to literally jump straight into putting together this yellow building here and then we're going to also explore some of the interiors in those other builds there. So it's time to get all these <laughs> blocks out once again and put together this much smaller cute little build here. From here, I jumped straight towards working on the interiors in the previous builds that we had made in a previous episode. And what I'm doing here is what I like to call putting together the basic infrastructure. So that's things like putting in the flooring, the staircases, fixing up the windows and the walls and the carpets, and just making everything look ready before fully furnishing it into the theme of what the build is going to be, whether that be like an inn or a pub or whatever. Uh, because I haven't fully decided yet what I want each of these buildings to be. It's quite difficult to do interiors in them when they're so small like this. So I'm, I'm still going to sleep on it and then I'm going to think about what I do by the time we finish this project. So if you have any more ideas on what you think the interiors for each of these individual buildings should be. I've already taken some advice from the previous video which was really helpful. But if you have any more thoughts just based on what you've seen today then do go ahead and let me know in the comments below. All right, so while everything is now done and dusted, so I say let's take one last tour around this place to check out all of the details that have just been added. So we're gonna start off here with the brand new little guy that we just made, and uh, I like this thing. It's made up of the stripped spruce logs once again, and then for the ground floor, I decided to just go with some good old fashioned oak planks. However, also using the double slab variant for the vertical planks adds a really nice bit of detail. And then I've gone for a jungle door. I really quite like the color of that wood when it's used correctly. And some more of my custom windows here, which we have seen before. And so if we look around this thing, you can see it's fairly simple. This is one of the more simple buildings, but towards the front there, we've got some really nice details. So let's head on through the interior to check that out. Now what I've done in here isn't anything too special just yet. This could still be turned into something proper, but I've kind of just added, as I like to say, the infrastructure. So we've got a bit of railing down to the lower section here. We've got our staircase. I did add a little table and some lights. And then towards the top, uh, it's pretty much a blank slate. I feel like this could be really good if we had a row of beds or something and it was maybe some kind of an inn, but we'll have to see for the future. I did add spruce trap doors to these two sides just to break up the really repetitive pattern that the compost composters for the walls create. Uh, but we'll have to see how that goes in the future. Okay, so let's head on down through to the front and check out all of the details on the front section. As you can see, it's looking pretty fancy and that's because we've got this really interesting window. So what this is, is this is actually scaffolding and I have retextured mine, but I've also done something special to make sure that we get the bottom of it here, as otherwise, if you were to place this regularly, 
you wouldn't get it. You would just get what you see over here. And the way I achieved this is beneath, I went and placed a stair. And that means that it's kind of floating in the air, or at least it thinks it is. And so by using another one behind it to actually place it, we can create that nice little cube texture. And regardless of what your textures are, I think this is a really cool detail idea. And uh, with the rest of the details or the texture of this item in my texture bag being oak, it fits in really nicely. And so if we just head on over to the front right now, you can also see that on this section, I went and added a few more details around the windows, however you would call that. And towards the front, I added a little sort of uh, extended section as well to make up those windows using the full glass box once again. And then for the roof, I wanted to create a sort of uh, thatched hay straw kind of look. And for that, I used hay, as you would expect. And then I've also got some different bamboo blocks here. We've got the stripped version and then we've got stairs and pressure plates and some buttons around just to break up the texture and make it look a little bit more messy. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this all turned out. All right, well, with that out of the way, let's check out some of the other interior tweaks that I've made since we last checked everything. Firstly, in here, I've gone ahead and added in a few extra details. Firstly, I went and added a fireplace because we do, of course, have a chimney, but without a fire, that doesn't make sense. And as you would know from watching the first episode in this series, that is something that really annoys me. So I went ahead and added that. And it's also a fire that isn't currently on since there's no smoke coming out the chimney. So that makes sense. And then over here, I've also added a painting onto the wall, which is yet again, another custom texture. And something I actually previously forgot to mention is over here, you can head down into this secret little area, which reveals the view from this side. As you can see, it's a bit ridiculously small in here. So I wasn't able to do a proper interior, but this is a nice little sort of Easter egg feature that you have to this place. All right, so finally, let's go ahead and check out some of the interior details that we have in these previous builds that we've made. So firstly, you saw me do the upstairs, but down here, I've just gone and updated the floor a little bit, replaced the cobble with stone, as well as the pink carpets here, just to cover up the other texture for now, until we can figure out what we're going to do in the final finished product. And then as we come up the stairs here, this is the big room. I gotta say, I absolutely love this. It's turned out really, really nicely. And I put a lot of work trying to create as many sort of interesting beams sticking out here and there and details and quirkiness. So I updated the balcony here to use some dark oak instead of the spruce, just so that it doesn't blend in. And then I've used the hanging signs as railings along this portion. And towards the top, I used the iron bars as railings. And you can take this ladder up to get up here. There's not a lot up here, but you can kind of get a view out of this window and you can see what I did over in this area. Now you're probably wondering what this is over here. This is in fact another retexture of mine. This is the Wither Skeleton Skull. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to get loads of these from that farm I made previously, because they allow for some really interesting details. I'm going to be using these a lot more in the future, but it's a nice way to incorporate it into this build for now. And so you can see how all of these beams kind of connect and around this window, as well as here, I did these nice little spruce details, bringing in the candles once again. Beneath these large windows, I have some tabletops or sort of desk, window sill areas, whatever you'd like to call them. And on here, I just have a few bits and bobs. So I've got a pot there. And then this right here is actually a retexture of the red mushroom, which turns it into a little quill in an ink pot there so that you can write on some paper. And then here we have some candles and whatnot. And then just above, I also updated the windows to have these nice shutters. In fact, you can see on here, one of them is closed, which is a fun little detail. And then, uh, yeah, that just about does it for this one. Let's go ahead and check out the other building. So towards this side, it's fairly simple. On the ground floor, I decided not to do anything just yet. But as we move on upwards, you can see that I did go ahead and update the windows to look nice and fancy and then also do a little bit of work on the roof and the walls over here. But you'll also notice I've got a lantern. This is the uh, Crimson Lantern, or the Soul Lantern, I should say. And I retextured this to be a turned off lantern, which I think looks pretty cool. I may still tweak the texture a bit, 
but it's also kind of interesting because it still gives off light and so I put the candle here to add a source of light otherwise it would look a little bit odd. If we head through to the other side you'll find that there's a lot more room and I was able to add a lot more details. So firstly we have a spiral staircase going up towards this bit and as you can see we've got a lot more windows and a lot more space in this bit for various different details and so on this side of the wall I added a couple of trap doors towards the bottom and some stairs towards the top to kind of frame it similar to what I did over in this bit but uh, around here we just have a simple table with a lamp and things but you can move up the ladder on this one and actually access a kind of an attic space so I've got a painting on the wall there this interesting balcony and once again you get a view out of the window with some more storage and uh, yeah so it's looking pretty nice up here this is one of my favorite actual interiors that I've made so far I think it's really quite a sort of dynamic area so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to sort of fully furnishing this in the future maybe adding a shop at the bottom and things like that well I'm really happy with the direction that this place is going in now if you're interested in getting your hands on my texture pack which I've mentioned quite a few times throughout this video it will be available in the description but otherwise that's going to just about wrap things up for today what I'm going to do now is set about putting together some more of those buildings so that we can finish off this awesome bridge project.